Hello, Tom Lavecchi here with the latest edition of the Arm Chair MBA. Today is a new special edition I like to call a Mafia Snack. It's a short but sweet episode giving you updated information on Cosa Nostra here, Italy, and wherever Cosa Nostra presides. With that being said, I want to give a shout out to um, James and OC Shorts and Jeff Nadu. This is a little bit of a homage to how they do the shows. So I wanted to try it myself and I call this a mafia snack. Today's subject, we're going to talk about what mobsters dub him as the doctor. His name is Gi Giuseppe Cotodato, was a top surgeon at the Civic Hospital in Palermo, which is a prestigious hospital. He also worked as a surgeon in Rome, but he doubled back as a high ranking mafia boss it's interesting enough is because people always wonder well why can't you know the italians uh stamp out um you know the mafia like they do in the u.s well in italy especially the the indragata as well as the mafia in sicily they are in the nexus of high society high-ranking politicians high-ranking police and so forth so it makes it a little more complex to kind of weed out because you don't know who is who and Gudadotto was not, again, not only a surgeon, but a top mafioso. He was arrested on February 13th, about 10 days ago, with his son Mario uh, Carlo, um, when they were coming back from Morocco, where they actually own a processing plant, a manufacturing plant for one of their businesses. What's interesting enough is they caught this doctor on wiretaps. So you figure, you know, he's a doctor and, and a mafioso who would want to kind of keep his son out of the life. He was actually grooming his son after they hacked his iPhone and was able to um, get wiretaps on him to help build a case. Um, if you've been to Sicily, Sicily is kind of a strange place. Uh, not everything is exactly how it appears, much with Italian life, but even more so in Sicily. But what's either further interesting about Cudadotto, he is um, his brother, Filippo, is the brother in law of top, top, top boss of bosses, Massino, uh, uh, Matteo Massino Dinato, which is literally the, the, the highest ranking fugitive worldwide on the top 10 list for Interpol and has been a fugitive since 1993. So as this guy doubles back, and this is Giuseppe right here, as he's been doubling back as a surgeon uh, and a top mafioso. He wasn't just a kind of soldier. He wasn't even a capo. He was a head of the Bagheria Medimente. Bagheria Medimente is basically a suburb of Palermo. It is a beautiful, beautiful uh, town on the um, on the north side. It's a subset of Palermo. I've been there. It is absolutely beautiful. Um, in New York, you have a lot of people from that area who emigrated over to New York and to the United States. And it's just a really, really beautiful place. Um, Matteo Massimo Dinero has been on the run since 1993 and is perceived to be the boss of all bosses. Higher than, Totori than Totorina, higher than B Bernardo Provenzano. So this guy's a boss of bosses. His brother-in-law, Filippo, um, is uh, Giuseppe's brother. So what was this guy involved with, which gets even <laughs> Further interesting, um, and I keep using the word interesting because it is, is he was the guy that would help get the cocaine from South America into Italy as well as Holland. The reason why I was saying to myself, wow, this is, again, interesting, is because typically the Calabrians own about 80% of the cocaine market in Europe. So what it does tell you, the Sicilian mafiosi still have a hand in it. So he was responsible for dealing with the South Americans getting it over to um, Italy stateside and or Holland and other areas. Um, he also was involved with importing hashish. Um, in Italy, they don't really smoke like general cannabis. They smoke the hashish version, a um, little lighter version. And that tends to be imported through the Albanian gangsters on the Adriatic side. And then that's actually imported typically with uh, what they call the fourth mafia, which is called Sacra Corona Nita, the Sacra, Sacred United Crown. So that fourth mafia typically imports hashish. So this guy has had tentacles all over the world. Um, he lately, uh, he served about 12 to 15 years in prison. He got into uh, 2012, kind of kept his nose clean, 
uh, for roughly 10 years. He had a very good run, uber wealthy guy, and literally um, headed up uh, locally was the Rochella or the Rochella or the Rochella Mafia family, which is again p- part of the Villa uh, Villabate, Bagarita Medimento. So it's really crazy where you see a top, top surgeon, not a doctor, not an attending doctor, not just some guy with a private practice, but a top surgeon who's operating on the elite in Italy, also dubbing back as a high level mafiosi. So my kind of learning from this is that the Sicilians are still involved with the cocaine trade in Italy. It was perceived that the Calabrians kind of had the monopoly on that to the point that the, uh, uh, the Cosa Nostra was buying from the Calabrians, but it looks like they had their ties back into South America. This is just one part of it. Um, but again, very powerful surgeon um, uh, in his own right with his career, but a very powerful mafioso. International connections to South America, importing hashish into Italy via the Adriatic side with uh, connections to the Albanian mafia, who they tend to have the corner on the Adriatic side to import a lot of different drugs. And they're also known a lot for cigarette smuggling. Um, well, was this ever the first time you heard of a doctor being uh, kind of a head of a mafiosi? Well, before Toto Rina's reign and Ber- Ber- Bernardo Provenzano's reign, um, there was a doctor, Dr. Miguel Nevada. He was actually a physician from Corleone. He had a run-in, and for those mobologists will know, of Luciano Leggio. He had a run-in with Luciano Leggio. He pushed him out in 1958. This is how Dr. Nevada uh, uh, met his demise, and that began the reign of the Corleonesi. On top of this, Corleonesi typically had a stronghold on the heroin market in the U.S. and in Europe but also was believed to have a strong foothold on the cocaine market. So it's interesting that the Palermitani are kind of coming back and saying, you know what, we're going to get her back into the game. We are getting involved with the cocaine trade, and it looks like it's kind of shifting back to the city of Palermo. So I find that to be kind of a power shift and a power dynamic. Um, I always say this, and I get a lot of crap for it, but I think part of the reason why the Cosa Nostra in the U.S. didn't keep up with the times. Now, um, uh, Giuseppe Cotodato was on, on tape saying that, you know what, a lot of these mafiosi, they're not educated or they're not advanced or they're not advancing enough where Cosa Nostra would be the point of being, I'm paraphrasing, but point of being extinct. So he's kind of combing his son to being what they call high mafia. This not talked about a lot, but there's this thing in Sicily called the high mafia. These are generally mafiosi that are in the upper crust of society. They are made men. And again, they bear themselves into the fabric of society which makes Cosa Nostra that much more dangerous and that much more powerful. Again, I think where the U.S., you had guys like Costello, Luciano, Lansky, were involved with politics and business, et cetera, as the the Cosa Nostra kind of migrated and kind of after Colo Gambino, it got to more local rackets, which was good in a sense because you had local control, but bad in a sense where you weren't able to influence government at a broader level. So this is the Mafia Snack. I want to either give your comments below. Do you like these short stories or do you prefer that I do long ones and unpack? Either way, there's a little Mafia Snack for you. And again, the Mafia surgeon, Giuseppe Cotodato, who um, was arrested recently along with his son, top, top surgeon, not just in in Palermo, but in Rome. And again, wasn't just kind of a regular doctor, but a top surgeon who saved lives and probably in some cases, took lives. And then a little twist that he was related to the most wanted fugitive in Italian history makes it all the better. Hope you enjoy this mafia snack. I'll see you on the next episode of the Armchair MBA.